Hi, everyone. Um, so I first want to start by thanking Rare. Um, I don't think it happens too often that disability is brought on this early in, into diversity and inclusion conversations. So, so it's been great to really be a part of, of this, and, and it makes me really hopeful. Um, so I wanted to start off by showing you this slide. Um, you know, I am in Cannes right now, or as we say in English, Cane. Um, and this is a sport that uh, derives from here. Uh, it's called Lacan, where people actually fought with canes. And so I like to think I came uh, cane blazing. Um, I also, you know, I th in thinking about what I wanted to say today, um, I realized what I really wanted to do was show you this tweet. So I'm going to turn around and read it. This is a tweet by Lego. It says, we're super excited to introduce Lego Braille Bricks, a new product from the Lego Foundation that will help blind and visually impaired children learn Braille in a playful and inclusive way. So this is the tweet below it. They had also posted a video. So I want to play part of that video for you right now, um, just so you can see um, what Lego had actually put out. So can we turn it down just a little bit so I can talk over it? So, um, you know, I, the question I want to ask you is, is how, how did this video make you feel, right? Pretty good, right? Faith restored in humanity. Um, you know, hopeful for the future. Uh, do I have any blind friends in the audience? Next year. Um, if I had a blind friend here, they would probably tell me something a bit different. They would say that they were pissed off, that they felt exploited. Can any, does anybody know why? The ad is purely visual. Right? How could a blind person actually know what is in this ad for a product that was created for blind people? Um, and so this is actually what I want to talk about is, is, is who is it actually for? Um, I don't know if any of you have seen this recent Nike ad. Have you guys seen it? So uh, in this ad, what happened is, is, is they signed their first ever disabled athlete. And it's actually not even four seconds into the ad when Nike actually uh, tells us that Justin Galagos suffers from cerebral palsy. Uh, so Nike announced this on World Cerebral Palsy Day. Um, and it's, it's just, it's offensive in the disability community to sort of presume that somebody is suffering. He really doesn't look like somebody who's suffering to me. Anyway, as the ad progresses, we learn that Nike is actually surprising Justin with a professional contract, surprising him. But if you actually Google signing day, what you'll find is, is image after image of athletes sitting at a table with a pen and a paper in hand. Sure, there may be balloons, um, but they're treated as professionals because that's what's happening is, is they're becoming professional athletes. Nike has no idea that what they're actually telling us is that they don't see Justin as a valuable signee. Um, the simple act of turning a professional contract into a gift tells us that they think it's actually their charitable gesture that creates the value. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that that's actually a terrible message to send to disabled people. But if you actually really watch this ad, what you'll realize is, is that we were actually not the intended audience. Um, so try again. So have, it sort of brings me to this. This is a Microsoft ad that aired over the holidays. I don't know if anybody saw this one, but what happens is, is the ad starts, there's a little boy that runs out of his house and he starts running down the street and he's yelling, he's gonna do it, he's gonna do it. And as the ad progresses, the little boy picks up little neighbor friends and they're all running down the street shouting, oh my God, he's gonna do it. And they finally arrive at the house where they sort of surprise reveal a disabled boy who is, um, who is uh, playing a video game and then suddenly, oh my goodness, this disabled boy wins the game and everybody sort of claps and cheers. Um, and it, it, it seems like on the surface like this would be a good ad, but what you have to realize is, is the way that this, the, the controller that the kid was using, it was the Microsoft Xbox adaptive controller, the way that it came to be was is there is a group of disabled people who radically fought for a controller. It was a group called Able Gamers. And what they did is they pushed Microsoft for years and they demanded an adaptive controller. And then when Microsoft finally relented and said, okay, what happened was is they then um, went back and said, no, we demand to be on the team. Um, and 
And, uh, and Nike said, okay, and so what you have is, is you have these things that these radical people uh, fought for, this thing that was created by disabled people, and then when uh, Microsoft enters the market, they decide they're gonna do so through children, and this is the, what happens in disability, is the things that we radically fight for turn into things that are empathetically done for us. Um, and so at the end of the ad, you know, they, they sort of espouse this idea of giving wonder, but what I really want is for the slide to turn. <laughs> I want them to give credit, right? So this is Steven Spohn. He's the, he is the founder of, of Able Gamers. Um, and I wish, and I keep asking Microsoft, will you actually create an ad and, 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 and tout and espouse what he actually did? Um, and I think this is actually what gets me about the Lego Braille Bricks, right? Is that, you know, in the, the Lego ad, what happened was is Lego um, stated that this was a new innovation that they had created, but in reality, uh, Lego those are the Lego Braille bricks. Lego uh, tactiles have been around and, as a product of the blind community since the 1980s. And so, you know, there is this way in which, you know, people look at these ads on the surf surface and they presume one thing, but when you actually start to really look into it, what you realize is, is that brands are starting to kind of hijack the work that we've been doing for generations. And so it's for all of these reasons that I created a website called Critical Access. Um, and what it is, is it's, um, it's a repository of um, disability representation in media and advertising. And so if you go on the website, what you'll see is, is a whole bunch of ads, and, and what we do is we categorize them according to disability studies trope. And through this process, we've actually started gleaning a few trends. Uh, one of the first trends that we actually learned was is that in advertising, the more words a disabled person speaks, the less believable the ad is actually perceived to be. Um, but the other one, and, and I think this is actually really why I'm here today, is, is that ads that fare sort of more stigmatizing on critical access uh, tend to fare really well in advertising awards. And so, for instance, just, um, just a short while ago, uh, this is called The Blind See More. Uh, it won uh, a graphite pencil at Dan Dad this year. And in the ad, they actually discuss, so it's an ad about how blind women, um, because of their sort of their tactile knowledge, they're able to detect breast cancer um, much better than a doctor or another professional. And, and so in the ad, um, the, the white male doctor who describes these blind women actually refers to them as lacking in competence. Um, and it, it's not even kind of suffice to say that the blind women never got to speak for themselves and also uh, the braille was not made tactile in the advertising campaign and so it was appropriation. And I suppose this is really, you know, the thing that I want to get to is, is so uh, this was a CAN headline this, this year. It says, CAN Lions expands jury guidelines to champion equal representation in confront inequality. Um, but when I actually downloaded the CAN app um, and searched the word disability, nothing came up. And so my question is, is, okay, say you're trying to increase the knowledge that we have about disabled jurors. How are you going about doing that? And so, you know, it is my hope that we can do three different things. The first is, is I hope that we can start to, um, uh, to train um, potential jurors to look critically at disability. The second thing is, is I hope that potential jurors understand critical access as a resource for them. And the third thing is, is I hope that CAN and Dan Dad and other uh, advertising awards will start uh, including disabled jurors. So this year at, at CAN, in the last few days, disability, as we predicted, won big. Um, and again, uh, the ads we, and we're currently building it out, the ads were entirely stigmatizing. And so, you know, it's my hope that I can come back next year and we can start to really understand, okay, what would an equitable and, and uh, productive advertisement that features disability representation look like and how can we go about achieving it. Thank you.